Welcome to Book Talks, the show that speaks to education, health, entrepreneurship, and so, so much more. Welcome, Zansi, to yet another amplifying episode of Book Talks. I'm your host, Patali Paloma Tati Dabani, and today in the studio we have Abid Lisekho. Abid Lisekho, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. How do you feel today? I feel super <laughs> good. At the same time, I'm nervous, but uh, I'm just happy to be here. Are you nervous? A little bit. Oh, shame. <laughs> sorry, man. Who is Lisekho Kumere? Uh, Lisekho Kumere is the guy next door, a uh, humble being. I'm a person living with a disability, bilateral hearing loss, but... Um, I'm just a cool guy to be friends with. I'm that guy. Okay. Um, we have a business. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's one of the coolest business I know because I'm a very lazy person. I don't like washing my shoes. And you have Sneaker Clinic. What inspired you to start this business and where are you located? Um, before Sneaker Clinic, actually, uh, I was born and raised in Pretoria, but I got expelled in grade four. So uh, my mom decided to um, come pick me up and stay with her in Johannesburg. And um, I got exposed to a different life. So basically, I went from a township to the suburbs, started having rich friends, and then I saw that, okay, there's a better way that a person can be living. So when I came back to Pretoria, I went to varsity at TUT, and then afterwards, um, I realized that, you know what, okay, I need to start something that I can call my own. Mm. And uh, we started Sneaker Clinic, and here we are today. Mm. What did you study at TUT? We started in 2021 mm-hmm. on the 5th of May mm-hmm. and yeah, fast forward today, we have achieved a lot of milestones. You know, we have employed over seven people, we manufacture our own sneaker cleaning products, mm-hmm. we're building our own um, systems. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's just an exciting journey. So you didn't work before you started the sneaker clinic? Before I started sneaker clinic, I worked at um, a major retailer mm-hmm. here in Blute. And uh, before I worked at a major retailer, I used to sell shirts. I even tried doing music, Mm -hmm. videography, uh, (laughs) photography, all those things. But none of them became feasible. So Sneaker Clinic was Mm. just another trial out Mm. and it became feasible. So yeah. Do you enjoy being a businessman? Yeah. (laughs) How <laughs> many challenges do you face saying when you start such a huge business? Because it's very different. So the challenges are how you get in, and how do you manage um, those challenges? Um, the main thing with starting a business that has no footprint to follow, it's there's a lot of challenges. You know, finding the right people to help grow the business, um, even sneaker cleaners. You know, because the techniques that we use is not something you can just Google and okay, this is how we're gonna do it. We just have to work with. The current shoe, whatever state it is in, uh, we we need to work on that. So the challenges is uh, one of the main things is fi- it's funding, because we started operating from a carport. After nine months, we managed to open a store. So funding um, that has been the major thing. Everything else is just a matter of trying things out and they come to life. Then funding, have you ever received any kind of funding from government, private institution, and what kind of funding? Yeah, a number of agencies have actually helped us. We have had um, CEDA in our early days, they've assisted uh, with marketing, and also they connected us to RM Seri, which uh, they referred us to TUT, they assisted us with product testing. Uh, We have had assistance from GEP, and they're still in the process of assisting us some more. <laughs> so they helped us with um, machinery, mm-hmm. uh, which have contributed a lot to the growth of Sneaker Clinic. So yeah, those are, and NYDA. Mm. NYDA has also assisted us, so yeah. Then where are you based? The shop at the Hariko Kai? I know uh, we currently two have two stores. Uh, mm-hmm. One is in Mabopani Square, and the other one is in Maminori Square. Mm-hmm. Don't ask about why the squares. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> we got the, and yeah. So we have two stores. Uh, Mabupani is a flagship store, and then Mami Lodi is it's I would call it a product kiosk because mm. we are operating in a small mm. container. What's the difference between the two? Okay, there we have limited services. At Mabupani, we do a lot, which is um, we have four departments actually. One is the sneaker cleaning, the other one is uh, repairs, the other one is restorations, and we also do a service called waxing. Mm-hmm. So basically, if you look at my jean, we can mm. wax it. And we also sell sneaker cleaning then products. Then it's all shiny, shiny, Yeah, correct. Oh. Yeah, correct. Yeah, we can also do that. Okay. Do, is it true that 
they were like, yeah. what is it? And <laughs> yeah. Kimaka. Yes, ma'am. That was true. Oh, I thought it was a lie. Then I know her, you know, when he started because he said you were expelled. Um, I just wanted to know, Hore, like, obviously you expelled, which was probably mm-hmm. something that was very difficult as a kid. So who inspired you, Hore, over this businessman that comes up with such a creative and a very different business? And um, who is your mentor? Um, if you have one. Okay, uh, we've been doing this for three years, and in the process, we haven't actually had a mentor. But it was more of people that I looked up to before Sneaker Clinic. Uh, I idolized Kanye West, and uh, one of the things that I've received from him was confidence. Mm. And I realized that with confidence, you can push yourself to do things that other people are not doing. Just Mm -hmm. if you're going to cook, add more salt if it works for you. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I've been looking up to Kanye West, and uh, it has helped me grow sneaker cleaning Mm -hmm. to what it is. We're still looking for mentors today. Mm. Yeah, we don't actually have one. We're just working it out. So I know you don't think that you're a mentor <laughs> to the people who work for you. Yeah. You, I, I mean, so what I'm sure means, I mean, it's quite inspiring. So obviously, when they look at you, what strategies did you use to expand sneaker clinic? Okay, um, there's a formula that I came up with, and that has helped us uh, retain customers. So it's basically um, customer service plus uh, quality work delivered on time equals to customer retentions. So um, at the shop, I'm the only one that has had formal employment and it has contributed to what we're doing right now. And um, with that formula, it helped. It, it has helped us educate the guys on how to deal with the customer and what is important to our business, which is cleaning shoes. Mm-hmm. So we need to make sure that the customer shoes are always clean. So customer service plus quality work delivered on time is equal to customer retention. So customers do return to okay. us. Yeah. Okay. Then where do you see your business in five years? In five years? Mm-hmm. Um, that is a good question. Uh, in five years, okay, what I've realized with the township sneaker cleaning industry, that I would say 90% of it is just informal. So I realized that I need to implement um, products and uh, uh, um, equipment that will help other informal sneaker cleaning business that could uh, make the industry sustainable. So um, I see the business as having more stores and actually helping other sneaker cleaning businesses, uh, uh, providing them with quality sneaker cleaning products mm-hmm. since we manufacture our own and also uh, providing them with the right softwares mm-hmm. to help with managing customers, managing customer shoes and all those things, yeah. What advice do you give to someone who wants to start? Like, obviously, Tomile, Elimoto, Tomile, and Atlaza, Ramutli says that, and then no, but like, what's and have something like a sneaker clinic. The advice that I would give is that somebody needs to prioritize the customer. Hmm. You know, anything else is just an extra. You know, you could have, um, your shop can look nice, you, but you shouldn't prioritize on that. You should prioritize on providing a proper service to your customer. So, yeah, that 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 is the advice that I would give. Mm-hmm. Put the customer first yeah. and everything should align. Okay. Then, obviously, Sneaker Clinic is something that you want to leave as a legacy. Correct. What personal and business legacy do you want to leave behind one day when you have to I want the business to outlive me mm. yeah I just want the business to outlive me that's why we are doing you know our products mm-hmm. and also softwares mm-hmm. you know so that uh, if I eventually go deaf the mm-hmm. business would be mm-hmm. able to sell itself mm-hmm. so uh, I really wish for the business to outlive me and then I really wish for the guys to understand the vision of what we're doing and for them to help us take it further. Mm-hmm. So yeah, in simple English, I mm. just want the business to outlive me. That's it. Okay, totally. Or maybe to outlive my disability. Yeah. <laughs> Aww, it's such an inspirational story. You talked a lot about your um, hearing. You said that you want your business to outlive your uh, your deafness. If you ever go deaf, would you like to t- expand that and tell okay. us what really um, happened? Actually, it started when I was still young. Uh, my grandmother, who is late, uh, always told my mom that um, when I was watching TV, I would like kind of like zone out, just focus on that thing. And she uh, told my mom that, okay, Lisa has a hearing problem. And we just never focused on it up until grade 10, grade 11. 
So uh, I passed on my, my, my grade 10, grade 11, metric with a hearing problem. Uh, eventually got to varsity and I started sitting at the front and I always had that hearing problem. So I went to uh, Steve Biko. Steve Biko, uh, they checked my ears and then they, uh, they didn't find anything wrong with it. Actually, they couldn't tell that maybe you have an infection or whatever. So as a black person, I've always thought, okay, this has to do with ancestral stuff. So I also consulted <laughs> and I was told that I'm the chosen one in my family. Yeah. Uh, it's my grandmother who's... The cause, same grandmother? Yeah, it's my grandmother, okay. not who the, from my father's, father's side. Because oh, okay. yeah, I'm not using my paternal surname. Okay. So uh, being the chosen one, uh, this is the issue. Yeah. You know, so I need to change my surnames, but it's just too late. Yeah. So doctors couldn't find anything wrong with my ear. I tried wearing hearing aids. They actually made my ear worse. Mm. And I only have um, just one ear mm -hmm. that is left. And here we are today. Here we are. With it. So it has uh, fueled a lot of energy in me to be a go-getter. Mm. You know, I just focused. Uh, I decided to accept it. And actually, uh, as... as, as um, my brother, not, not my biological it's brother, brother yeah. but yeah, he's a brother. Yeah. He has told me that, you know what, listen, oh, your disability is not actually a disability, it's your ability that mm. what sets you apart mm. from others. Mm -hmm. And we will see one day when you become something, you're going to have a beautiful story to tell about it. So it's no longer a disability to me, but it's more of it's an ability to, 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 to push in life, mm -hmm. to understand that you have limited time on earth. I can go deaf tomorrow, but by when I go deaf, what is it that I have achieved before I got deaf? Okay. Uh, I would listen how we'd like to know where we can get Sneaker Clinic on social media, if you guys have a website so more people can reach you. People like me who okay. need issues. <laughs> uh, we are on Facebook. We are on uh, TikTok. We are also on Instagram. Uh, so if uh, we also have a website where uh, people can actually visit that, it's www.sneakerclinic.co.za, how do you spell clinic? So it's sneaker, uh, S-N-E-A-K-E-R, clinic, C-L-E-A-N-I-C.coza. And also uh, for our social media, it's at sneaker clinic, uh, sneaker underscore clinic. And yeah, that's where you can reach us and we will we will reply to you thank you ne. thank, <laughs> thank you, you for, for coming me. thank you for inspiring us like i would be so said that he didn't let his disability be his disability he let it be his ability so guys always remember that nothing stops you and always do something that makes you have a legacy to leave behind i am your host i hope that you've been uplifted and inspired and i'll see you next week Thank you.